Welcome to Lost Culture, one-stop destination for everything pop culture. My name's Aston, I'll be your host for today's episode of Lost Movie News. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share so your friends can see. And as always, let's get right to the show. Our first, ep- our first story of the day is going to be Yvonne Strosky. She's actually been cast for The Predator. So, Predator is being directed by Shane Black. Um, <clears throat> she's actually been cast to play the, um, play the role opposite of Boyd Holdbrooks. She's going to play his ex-wife while he's playing like a military man. And I think this is a good fit for her. Like, I think this movie is actually going to be a lot better than people are expecting it to be. We see we get the R rating for it. It just started filming. And... It's cool to see how this stuff is going to turn. I guess it's cool to see how everything's starting to come together. And I am really have like high expectations for Shane Black in this film. I want to see how it turns out. I hope it goes back towards more of like the um, the 80s version of Predators. Remember back in the 80s when I had short, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger and everybody running through the woods. And I'm, hope, I'm hoping that it goes back towards that route. Cause we see how to come um military people and everything. So a person, a guy can only hope that it goes back to the roots and get, get kind of w- get away from that alien versus predator kind of vibe that we were getting at the last few years. Now, <coughs> <coughs> moving on to our next story, we got Scorsese's and De Niro's The Irishman, and this film it's been pretty um po- really popular. And we see this film has been snatched up by Netflix. So now a lot of questions everybody's asking, is this film still going to go to theaters? And that's a pretty good question to ask because we know Netflix, they're kind of stingy with their properties. Once they get them, they want to keep them in-house. But we've seen with, um, what was the, um, the Idris album, um, Beast of No Nation. That actually went to theaters so it can be up for Oscar noms. So I have no fear. I think Netflix actually might send this one to theaters. They did pay, I think, $100 million to get the rights to this film. So I think it might do a nice little limited release, just the same way like Beast of No Nations did. And I think it's fine. I think this is still going to be a good movie. I'm Scorsese and De Niro. We know they're supposed to be trying to do like the, um, I think like the Benjamin Button technology. I hate that. I hate how they call it that, but we see, we like, I think it's fine. I think this film is going to be great. I think this film will do well still, even if it only goes to Netflix. Basically, Netflix is just going to use it to um, boost their subscriber based up. Even if it's only going to be like for, like for a month or so, they're definitely going to use it to get that boost. And I'm hoping it does go to theaters though. Like this is one of those films that. When you hear the cast and everything and what they want to do with the film, this is one of those films that you hope go to the big screen so you can see it in its full glory. So I'm hoping Netflix doesn't just keep this in house and actually sends it out on like onto the streets. Now, moving to our next topic of the day, we got Christian Stewart. Christian Stewart is no longer playing a vampire. Like we, like we see she's trying to she's starting to like pump her um like peek her head back out into the limelight. We see she actually just did, um, what's the last thing she did? Oh, like Saturday Night Live a couple weeks ago. So we see she's starting to peek her head back out. We see um, she's actually in talks um, to play a new role with Fox. Uh, Fox has rights to the film for Underwater. It's like, it's going to be directed by Will Urbank. And basically, it's going to be an underwater, like, underwater film. There's going to be some scientists who were doing an experiment, I, they didn't like say where, I don't know if it's gonna be a submarine or some type of like, um, under like some underwater base or something like that, but a series of earthquakes are gonna come and these um, scientists are actually gonna fight, have to fight for survival, not towards each other, but we don't really, like I have, there's nothing else, all it tells us is, is an underwater base movie and there's some scientists who have to like, basically survive an earthquake while they're like, doing their experiments and everything. Now, this didn't go anyway, so it's obviously going to be type of a thriller. I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't know if they're fighting each other, if they're fighting the elements, um, if their structure, whatever they're in, underwater. And once the earthquake hit, it damages their structures that have to fight against time and work together or whatever. We have no idea. Obviously, it's going to be a fight against time due to the fact that they're underwater. So... You can only be underwater without supplies for so long. So 
it, there's definitely going to be some type of some type of thriller with that going on. Now, am I like, excited for this film? The concept of the film gets me kind of excited, like not excited, but it gets me like intrigued. I'm definitely intrigued by the concept of this film. A little scientist underwater doing some experiments, earthquake come. Um, what was that? San Andreas underwater. San Andreas underwater. Just add the rock to it. You no, know, just San Andreas part two. So <laughs> going on from there, we got films opening this week. We're gonna do one today. We'll cover the other two tomorrow. So today's film we're gonna cover is Get Out. So this um, film is actually sitting at 100% on Rotten Tomatoes right now. And it's very rare that a film does that. So the basis of this film is that it's about an interracial couple. Um, he goes home. Um, the male is actually African-American descent. And he's going home to meet his um, Caucasian girlfriend's uh, like family. So when we get there, we see this, the town's kind of offish. We see a couple black um, people around the town. Not too many. They're all kind of like off. I think one's like a housemaid. One's um, just some random guy. He's the same guy from uh, Atlanta. And he's like, something's off in this town. And then we see when he's going there, he goes numb and everything. And he has to fight his way out. And... I, it's crazy to see. It's crazy to see this. Like I've been in a couple interracial relationships. I've never like been scared to meet the girls with like, parents or anything. So, but hey, like obviously it's a good film. Like, critics think this is a good film. It's sitting at hundred percent. Fans haven't be able to, haven't got the chance to see it, but they will tonight. And I'm hoping they will see this. Like I'm hoping to go see this. Check it out. A couple horror films. To see how it turns out. Now, going on from there, we have Deadpool. So, the newest like round of rumors for Deadpool two is coming out. We seen earlier that um, it kind of like leaked out to the public that Drew um, Goddard is actually writing the um, the writing the film, and that right there brought up a couple things because we know people been falling left and right. They they like they lost the director. They lost the um. What do they call the guy who does the music? They lost the music producer, like not the music producer, but the music guy. They lost a lot of different stuff. So now we see once they like, Drew Goddard came out, um, the news came out about Drew. We see that Ryan Reynolds basically had to get on damage control and let everybody know that Reese and Wernick is still on the project. They're not like off the, they're not, they didn't hire new writers. These guys probably wrote the first draft. Maybe the second draft, and now they're bringing in Drew to actually clean up that draft so they can go on, go on to the filming. And this is completely normal for like a film. This kind of like one person comes, like one person writes the like the first draft and everything, and another person comes and clean up. Does not mean there's issues with the like with the staff or anything. If anybody got fired? It just means they brought in some new blood to get a new point of view and just to clean some stuff up. Maybe um. Maybe there's a couple of spots they thought that could be tightened up or um, enhanced by this new writer. So there's no reason to worry about a new cast member coming back, and not a new cast member, but a new writer coming in for the script, especially at this point. Like we see Ryan Reynolds release a tweet that Reese and Wernick is like the heart and the, like the beat of the soul or something like that, the heartbeat and soul of this project, which it could be completely true. Like you can write a script, write the first couple drafts, and then have a new person come in at the end and just tighten everything up. There's no issues with that. Even like in college, you like you might write the initial thing, then take it to someone to get it proofread, to get their point of view, to get to get a little quick edit, so you can actually get a higher grade. Now, that doesn't mean like there's something wrong with your project. It just means you want to get extra eyes on it to see where, <clears throat> see some things that you like, you might not thought of and they can give you some new criti uh, criti critics on it. So I think this is okay. I think everything is fine. This is, this is just how it works in Hollywood. Unfortunately, sometimes you write a project and someone has to come in and just like tighten it up for you. And that's good. Like, we all want the best for Deadpool too. So there's no thing, nothing to be worried about. Everything is okay. I think this film is gonna do good. And let's just see how it turns out. Now, moving on to buy or sell. So, for our buy or sell segment, our first story of the day is going to be um, X-Force. So we just went from Deadpool, now we're on X-Force. So X-Force, they're um, 
I originally was said that Simon Kimberg is actually going to pin and kind of like direct it, but since Simon Kimberg got like basically got tied up with the new X Men Supernova film, they had to find a new person to come in and write the film for an X Force movie and to direct. Now the rumors are now that Joe Carnahan is actually going to step up to the plate. He's at least writing the film. He's actually expected to direct it also, and only time will tell. And I think this is actually, actually by this like. I, with Simon Kimberg being tied up with the Supernova film, it makes sense that they need to bring in somebody else to actually pin and work on and direct this film. They need a new person to come in. Like, since Simon, like, it makes sense. It makes sense that someone else has to step up and do this. And I'm going to actually buy this. Moving on to our next story is Logan. So earlier this week, it turned out, that just turned out, but rumors started to spill out that Logan had a post credit scene that you wanted to stick around and see. Now, today, Mango came out and said there is no post credit scene. There's no post credit scene, so there's no reason to sit around the theater and wait for it to come out. And this is kind of surprising because even like, <coughs> I don't remember if, if Apocalypse had it. But I definitely remember um, Days of Future Past had a um, end credit. I believe it was Spider Man. If I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure it was like a, a scene from like um, the Amazing Spider Man Two or is it Amazing Spider Man? Yeah, the Spider -Man, from Spider Man Two. So I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> I don't remember if like, I don't remember Pockets had one or not. I don't know. The movie's kind of like a blank to me. But I definitely remember um, Days of Future Past having an end credit scene. So. We see, I, 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 I believe it. Like, I'm definitely going to buy that there's no, um, there's no post credit scene that he's coming out and saying it. But what he did also say that there will be, like, there may, like, there's no post credit scene, but there may be something before the movie starts. So I wonder what trailer that is they're going to tie to the front of it. Like, it's, like, I can't wait. Like, I believe that there is going to be a very big trailer in front of this film. It only makes sense. Like, it makes sense to put a good trailer in front of Logan. Logan is a like, Hugh Jackman's final run out. It's going to be um, a superhero movie. So expect they're expecting big numbers from this film. I don't know how. I don't know what they're tracking for right now to look it up. I'll definitely report it when we do. Um, it's definitely coming out next week. So it's definitely going to be in our what's. Um, Basically, it'd be in our this week section. So I let you know what the numbers they're tracking for and everything. And I'm hoping it's a good film. I'm excited for um, Logan. A lot of reviews are coming out saying this is a good film. So it's only only time will tell how good it actually is. So I'm actually going to buy there not being a post credit scene, but being either one or several big trailers attached to this film. I'm going to buy that. Now moving on to our next um, our next topic is the Alien Covenant. So Fox released a um, five minute pre um like a little a uh, prequel or prologue they called it a prologue for um, Alien Covenant. And what can I say? I actually liked it. I love seeing the cast before they go into the, um, the cryo sleep. You see them drinking, joking around, playing games, eating, supper, and everything. I enjoyed it. I loved it. I love the robot. Um, I like what Michael Fassbender is playing the robot. I like how he's tying these films together. He's going to be a little thread for like, his model number or whatever. He's going to be the one that ties all these films together. And it's cool to see. Like, it's good to see that. I love the way they... Um, I might be getting the trailer mixed up with the prologue. But I, I love seeing like how he just came in, smacked on the back. I got your back. Like, the little joke and everything. This was a good... I love to see in the cast. I didn't even know Jesse... Um, not Eisenberg. Um, Smollett? Smollett? Yeah, I didn't even know he was even in this film until um, just now. Literally, like, when I watched the little prologue. I didn't know he was going to be in this film. You see how what James Frank was going to be the captain? He's actually not feeling well. That explains the reason why he had the blanket on in the image they released yesterday or the day before. And... I'm actually excited for this film. This little prologue did get, did get me excited. I love the way it looks. It's dark. Um, I love the way the cast gets let the cast get along, but the chemistry we seen on screen between these people. Yeah, yeah. Even like a little bigger, like we see. Um, he's talking about the gay relationship. 
and you see like the other relationship, like, oh, why are you talking so loud? He might hear you, whatever. All the drama between, we see that they don't get, some of people don't get along. A lot of people do get along. And it's cool to see, like, that's how all, like, I don't say all relationships are, but definitely the work, in the workstation. There's always a couple of people who get along, some people who don't get along. Even though they're, like, maybe a tight crew, there's always a couple of people who don't really get along, but get along just for work's sake. So, I was glad to see the different aspects of that. So, I definitely had to buy this. Um... It was, a, it was a very good like little prologue, little teaser. Just the, um, the appetite's ready for this film. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to buy this. Moving on to our final story of the day, Ghost in the Shell. So, Ghost in the Shell released two new posters. And I can't lie, I'm going to buy this one, too. I'm, I'm definitely going broke today. I'm definitely going broke because I like both these posters. Neither of these posters say anything about the film. But I like this. So the first one right here, we see she's jumping through the glass. We've definitely seen this one in the um, trailers of Scarlett Johansson jumping through the mirrors. Not the mirror, but the glass, breaking the windows and everything, shooting. So I like this one. We've seen it before. There's nothing new. But I just like the way, like the way it looks. Now, moving on to our second poster right here, the robot face. This is amazing. This is amazing. I love this graphic. I, I love it. Like, this is... I love the way they did this, even though like it's really simple. I think we even seen this shot in one of the trailers. So the base is using shots from the trailer, but it's cool. Like, it's cool. It doesn't give too much away about the movie. Um, it gives a little aspects about it, but besides that, there's not much that gives away. It's just a great poster. Gets you like intrigued. Gets you to come in. Um, maybe look up a trailer or something, and just enjoy yourself. So, that's really all we have today. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and stop by our website. As always, stay lost.